So topic two, we talk about human impacts on ecosystems. In topic one, there's a good example given of how organisms impact their ecosystem. It talks about a beaver. And the beaver comes into an ecosystem and decides to, sees a stream, decides to build a dam. It cuts down trees and builds a dam across this river. What happens to this little river or stream ecosystem when the, when the beaver builds a dam is the dam stops the water and causes a lake or a big pond to grow on the upper side of the dam. So upstream we get this pond and downstream it has the opposite effect and it makes this stream narrower and it even starts to dry up sometimes. So this has effects on all the organisms that are in this ecosystem. It changes their environment basically. The fish that were in the, the lower part of the stream here can't survive anymore. That There's not enough water, not enough flow and so the fish end up leaving, going somewhere else or or dying. The, then the animals that survive off eating those fish, they have to find somewhere else to survive as well. The pond floods some areas. It affects the plants along the bank um, and it affects the different organisms that can now live in this ecosystem because there's different animals that like to live around ponds than, than around flowing streams. And a single beaver has now changed this whole ecosystem. As humans, we can have a much greater impact than the beaver even has. The way that we fulfill our needs is a lot different than the way that uh, the beaver does. A lot of our needs are met by using our natural resources. Some of them are renewable and some of them aren't. So trees is one that's commonly talked about. Uh, oil is a natural resource. Water is a natural resource. Um, all the minerals we get from the ground used to make various products. And all those natural resources that we use uh, affect the ecosystems when we take them from the ecosystems. Uh, we also, when we use those natural resources, we cause changes to the environments. So some of the changes that we make are we cut down trees, and we change forests into flat ecosystems, um, we clear land for farming, even if it wasn't forest land, even if it was already prairie grassland, the, the prairie grasslands that are wild are a lot different than the things that we farm and, and place there after we cultivate and plow it all in. Uh, we build roads. Roads can have a drastic effect on ecosystems. They cut ecosystems in half. They become barriers that animals have to try and cross and sometimes they don't do that very successfully. And we build cities and towns. We, we plunk these big cities and towns right in the middle of ecosystems and animals have to learn how to deal with it or they have to go somewhere else to survive and we push them out. Um, and another thing we do is we build lots of dams that helps us get electricity. To meet a lot of our needs. Um, something you need to think about just a question that you need to think about is when, when our needs as humans conflict with what other animals need, um, what should we do? If there's a conflict between what we want or need and how that's going to affect other organisms, what's the right thing to do? All right, um, we're going to talk a little bit about today versus the past and our effects today are much greater than our effects that we had in the past.
Our humans as a species have a lot more drastic effects on the environment uh, nowadays than we did even a hundred or so years ago. So in the past, people would hunt, they're called hunters and gatherers. They would hunt and gather their food, basically just follow the food wherever it went. They would follow various herds of animals, elk or deer, whatever it happens to be. Um, they follow the food wherever it went and they would use what they could that was around them, but their, their impact on the environment was very, very little. Okay, so these people would follow their food. And they had to follow their food to survive. If they didn't follow their food, um, this was before we were able to plant things and become sedentary people staying in one place. Um, but technology helped us to settle the land. So we had settlers um, and farming began with the inventions of new technologies like the plow that helped us to till the land, learn to plant seeds, and you could grow your own food and you could stay in one place for years. You didn't have to follow your food around. Um, so technology helped us as humans, helped us as a species to, to thrive and grow, but it changed the face of the land. We started to make the land into what we wanted for our uses. Then industrialization came around and cities. Now the new technologies here with industrialization and building cities is humans learned how to build machines and put them to their own use and we learned how to use resources. A lot of the natural resources we learned how to use oil and build engines and now we're able to stay in these big cities in these big places manufacture large quantities of products we're able to support lots of people in one area with farming communities around these big cities and we have the world we have today where humans are having this huge impact on the ecosystems that we're part of okay needs versus wants when do our needs become wants. Remember the four basic needs of all living things are air to breathe, we need to exchange gases, we need habitat to live in, we all need water to drink and survive with, we're all made of lots of water, and we need food to eat. So anything that doesn't apply directly to those four things becomes a want uh, rather than a need. We say lots of things. We say we need a new TV, I need a new car, I need more clothes, I need a, a new bike, I need a bigger house, I need bigger, better toys than my neighbor. All those things are, are wants that we have, not really needs, and they all affect ecosystems. Um, even, our, even our needs that we have uh, require natural resources in order for us to have them. If you just think about going to the store, if you go to the grocery store and you buy some bananas, those bananas in Alberta here, we don't grow bananas, those bananas had to come from somewhere uh, and they've had to be grown. So somebody has tilled the land somewhere and changed the, the, the face of the land and made farming land to, to make those bananas. They've uh, collected the bananas, harvested them, put them on trucks and boats, and they've shipped them all the way up here to Alberta. And they've used natural resources, they've used oil and gas, they've caused pollution getting them here. So even even our basic needs of, of having food to eat on our table often require natural resources. You gotta look way back and see where everything's coming from. Even if it's organically grown, um, if it's not grown locally, right around your community, then you're still 
having to transport it. You're still using up natural resources to transport it from one place to the other. Now, is it possible to go back in time and go back to the way things were, where humans didn't have as much of an e impact on their environment? Some people would like to do that. Some people would think that um, that would be a good thing to go back in time and change things. Let's get back to how we were have little impact on the environment, but that's not possible. So what it really comes down to is we need to know how to make uh, responsible choices. And that's what it really is about. When you're thinking about our impact on an environment, is you have choices to make every day. And if it's a responsible choice, then you're going to have as little impact as possible on your environment. Um, irresponsible choices will cause more damage to the environment. And there are no simple answers. Um, sometimes we'll look at things that humans are doing to the environment and you might think they're good, you might think they're bad. There's no simple answer to, the, to this. Okay, take forest fires, for example. A lot of times you think of forest fires, you think they're a bad thing, um, but some natural parks s actually set forest fires on purpose. Um, and that's because we've discovered that forest fires aren't always a bad thing. It's a natural process that happens. And in some areas, we need to help provide food for grassland grazers like the deer and the elk. And forest fires, after they burn, actually provide a perfect environment for new grasslands to grow. So some, some national parks will have controlled forest fires to help provide food for all the grazers in the national park. Um, another example of there's no simple answers is this pesticide called DDT. Um, as humans we need food. DDT was a pesticide that they used on crops to help kill all the insects that were eating the crops and destroying the crops. You know it might seem good that it's you've got this pesticide that'll get rid of these organisms that are hurting the crops and harming how much food we're getting from the crops, but it had an effect that people didn't think of. DDT um, when they sprayed it on the crops, ended up getting into the food chain and moving up the food chain into the peregrine falcons. And it devastated the peregrine falcon populations. It made the eggs soft so that they would break easily. The chicks just didn't survive. Something that seemed like a good thing and was providing more food for humans by killing the insects that were eating the food ended up being something that was horrible for the environment and peregrine falcons have been, had to be reintroduced they're coming back, they're starting to thrive again um, but it's only because we figured out what DDT was doing and DDT has been banned in Canada. The, the last example here of no simple answers is the swift fox. Uh, once we killed the swift fox to a point where it was almost extinct, it was extirpated from Alberta. That means it was found elsewhere but not in Alberta anymore. Um, they figured out that the swift fox actually had positive effects on the ecosystems and we needed to get the swift fox back. Um, predators are a good thing. They might kill the occasional farmer's animal, but they do a lot of good things in the ecosystem. They keep populations of um, mice and deer, rabbits. They keep all these populations down to a normal level where they're controlled naturally. Um, if they didn't do this, then too many of these other animals would be grazing on the on the crops and destroying the food that we're trying to grow. So it's actually beneficial to have the right number of predators 
around.